coming to the states to fight against Terence Crawford in a you know in a, in a similarly significant fight. Yeah, so basically, I love fighting in the states. Um, I've had some big performances here, and I wanted to be back over here again and to put another big fight on. Um, New York is one of my favorite locations in America. So when this fight was put to me, and it was going to be a big fight, it was going to be a pay per view fight. I decided to, you know, take this fight with both hands and make sure that I can, I can take, I, I can, I, I make sure that if I'm going to take this fight, I'm going to win this fight alone. Um, so that's the reason um, I, 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 I decided to take this fight. I mean, I spoke to my team, and my team might have been a little bit, um, they didn't agree with me as much, but I was like, um, look, this is the fight I want because Terence, look, can break it down the fight. You know, Terence is a very skillful fighter. I always do well against skillful fighters. You know, um, this is going to be like a game of chess at times. The legs come forward, he does punch well, and he does like a fight as well. So then, it's not the best of both worlds, and no one's like the same weight as me. I mean, he's going to be, um, I mean, I'm, I thought I went a bit more, so I'm probably physically the bigger guy in this fight. I'm physically um, the guy who's been in the 147 division longer as well. So I've got that advantage on my side, where normally I'm the smaller guy fighting these bigger guys. You know, so um, I think that's definitely going to be on my side. People, I mean, do you, my do you, yeah. Yeah, sorry about that. I thought you were done. People might feel, um, sorry, sir. people might feel that you know, from my last performance against um, um, Vargas, I'm going to be the same. But I mean, I know that was a very bad performance. I mean, it was just uh, not me. You know, you know, I know I had to just go in there and win a fight. I mean, it's hard to motivate yourself against guys where you're supposed to win because you're supposed to. All you have to do is turn up there, and you know, you're going to win the fight. Because you're, you know you you got the better skill set and everything else. So in this fight, this is what I have to do in my A game. I have to make sure that I can't make any mistakes. And I have to go into this as an underdog, but prove myself and win this fight. Amir, was any part of your thought process in taking this particular fight? And, and I'm saying this based on my understanding that financially it's about the same uh, for both fights. You would have made a lot of money for either fight. So was part of your thought process, you know, I can fight Crawford, have an opportunity to fight on a big American pay-per-view to win the welterweight title. Uh, against a top opponent in a you know a, a place I know you like fighting New York City, and whatever happens, if you win, if you lose, whatever goes down, if it's a draw, that Kell Brook is still going to be a fight that's in your back pocket that a lot of people are still going to want to see, regardless of the outcome of April twentieth. Well, I don't know. I don't know if that fight's still going to be there. I mean, I chose this fight over that fight, and I know that I've seen in a numerous times in the media Eddie saying that the fight literally dead. Now it's not going to happen again. I mean, look, who knows? Time will tell. I mean, I'm taking this fight step by time, fight by fight, and let's get this fight the way first, and then we take it from there. I mean, look, that fight might never happen, or it might happen, so I mean, it's just, I'm just taking every fight back as it comes, really. Understood. And let me ask one question to Bob. Hey, Bob. Yeah, Dan. Bob, when you, when you were, uh, and everybody at Top Rank was looking for an opponent for Terrence to fight uh, in this spring uh, time frame, how, was Khan sort of at the top of your list, or did you have to sort of go through and see who was available? Or was he, because he's got a big name, he's got a lot of accomplishment, you know, he's got a fan base. How, how do you guys go about deciding that, you know, let, let's target Khan to make an offer to, as opposed to any other uh, fighter in the welterweight division? Well, the first thing is, what's the best fight we can do? And I have always been an American fan. And I, I say this without, uh, you know, not because I'm promoting him in this fight, but I remember back in the day, years and years ago, when Amir Khan uh, joined uh, Manny Pacquiao in his camp and was a tremendously skillful sparring partner. Amir knows we were, uh, uh, I think in the Philippines, he, he, yeah. he participated in that camp. And so I, look, I know a little bit about boxing. I'm not one of the matchmakers who really uh, are, are tremendously skilled, but I've been around over 50 years in this sport, and I know what makes a good fight and what's a competitive fight. And I'm telling you that Amir Khan against Terence Crawford is a hugely competitive fight. Styles make fights, and this is the first pay-per-view event that we're doing with 
with ESPN, and we value tremendously our relationship to ESPN. And I want going in and I have to fight, so going out, everybody to say, hey, this was a great, great fight. And I really believe that the fight will be a tremendously interesting, competitive fight. And that's why we made it. That is the truth. That is why we made it. There are other fighters that, uh, uh, other welterweights uh, who are coming along and may one day step up and fight for a welterweight champ. I'm sure they will, like the Eastern Europeans of uh, Disputin and Kavaleskis. But this fight, instinctively, I knew and my matchmakers uh, agreed was a very, very competitive fight. I mean, you have to understand there are very few fighters who have the boxing skills of Amir Khan. Very, very few. So I look at this as a very competitive fight. All right, thank you very much, Bob. Appreciate it. Thanks, Amir. Your next question is from Carla Stora. Uh, hi, uh, thanks, Amir and Bob, for taking time to talk to us. My first question uh, for, for Amir is that, you know, you you said New York is, you know, one of your favorite boxing homes, and it's been besides a lot of your big wins. Uh, does go fighting in New York kind of bring back any special memory, whether it be the, the fight against uh, Paul Malinaji or, or, or just overall it gives you more motivation to perform well because it is such a big market? Well, I got married in New York City, so I think that's a good one. Um, and then obviously, um, I, um, my, my in-laws all live in New York. I spend a lot of time over there. But not only that, my first fight in America was in uh, New York City at the uh, MSG, at the smaller one, at the, at the, the smaller arena to have. And uh, that was a great performance against Tony Manalaji. And uh, that was my entry to America. So. You know, this is another big fight here, and when, when it was New York, I was like, yes, because we, I, 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 I walk around the New York um, city, and I've met so many fans who have always said to me, why don't you fight in New York again? Like, all your fights are normally in Vegas, and in LA, in, you know, in that side, the West Coast, and I'm like, okay, you know, we, one day I will come back to New York, and I think this is the time now where I come back for the big fight and to give my fans and the people of America another big one. Amir, I mean, Cropper, as you mentioned, you, you spent more time as a welterweight than Terrence Cropper. Have you had a chance to sort of look at Terrence Cropper's two fights against Jeff Horn and Jose Benavidez? And if so, what did you make of Cropper at 147 pounds so far? I'm never a good fighter. Look, I can't take him. I can't take him. I can't take, can't take his life. This fight is going to be a tough fight. And he's a very, very good skilled fighter with power. So, so with decent power. Um, you know, he's, uh, he's, he's durable, he moves well, boxes well. So, for me to um, uh, win this fight, I have to be on my head. I can't make any mistakes. Uh, but he's still, um, I'm not going to say how he This is what I read on the media. People saying he's quite new in the welterweight division. But I don't think he is. I mean, you can see he's a quite filled out welterweight fighter. I mean, for the, for the welterweight division, I think he's at the height and everything. He kind of moves into it quite well. So I'm not going to go in there thinking I'm stronger, I'm bigger, I'm the physically bigger fighter. I'm going to go in there and use my skills to win this fight. My skills are, is what's going to win the fight, not the size, not the power. You know, and it's about being my, my, my IQ and my skills for this one. One last quick question for Bob. You know, what was the, what was the thought process of sort of making this fight into a pay-per-view? Was it, you know, the, the matchup itself, or was it a, a sign where, you know, Crawford is shooting his fight on ESPN television, drawing incredible ratings and record high viewership? Was it a matter of simply, you know, this was the time regardless of the opponent, or simply the matchup warranting a pay-per-view event? <laughs> I mean, it, I'm sorry. The, it, it, this, it's really a combination of both. It's the matchup uh, that warrants the pay-per-view, and it's also because it's such a big fight that, you know, this is professional boxing, and the fighters have to be compensated because it's such a big fight. And therefore, you cannot rely 
uh, on uh, a network to constantly come up with big, big money uh, uh, as a rights fee. So if the fight is big enough, you have to then go to the public and say to the public, hey, this is a terrific fight. You have to support the fight. Now, sometimes the public says no. But, you know, if we have confidence in the event, they'll say yes. So that's really what it's about. We can stop playing the games of whether a fight should be pay-per-view or shouldn't be pay-per-view. The first question, is it a really good matchup, really an interesting event? And then secondly, can is it affordable on regular television? Can a rights fee support the fight? And in this case, uh, the we have a splendid event and we have uh, fighters who have to be and should be compensated for their performances and therefore you go to pay-per-view. That is the mindset. Everything else is noise. Thanks, Bob, and thanks, Amir. Thank you. Your next question comes from James Bell. Hello, uh, this is uh, James Bell for Boxing Source, and I have uh, one question for Amir Khan. Um, yeah. you, you've been uh, talking about uh, coming into this fight, uh, being the underdog, but uh, you've been uh, familiar with big fights over the course of your professional career. Uh, so, yeah. like, how does, you know, having that familiarity and that experience kind of like back into this particular fight as you might not have to worry about all the media coverage, press coverage, and stuff like that yeah. know, leading up to this particular fight? You know, I've been quite lucky where from my first fight as a professional, I, I, um, I was on, like, I was the main attraction on television. I had the media, the big press conferences, I had the conference calls and everything. So I had a lot of media attention from day one since I turned professional. And, you know, I've been going 14 years strong as a professional and still I've had every, I've had big media coverage and um, I love, I've had that kind of pressure on me. But I've, I've learned how to cope with that pressure, you know, and how to deal with that pressure. And really now, when I go into a fight, you know, and, uh, when I go to a fight, I, need to, I, I always make sure that it's not on my mind. And I'm like, Cool and chill. That's the last thing I think about uh, with all this pressure. And also, one more thing I want to say, you know, uh, this is to everybody, is that uh, Crawford, there's a lot of talk about Crawford fighting Spence. Spence just come off the fight. And, I mean, all the people that I talk about that fight, he's got his hands full against me because I, I'm not just a number. You know, I know when I have to turn it on, I can turn it on. And, I mean, I, in maybe previous fights, I've won the fight, but I'm not maybe with the best. I mean, but because I know that I really belong at a level above. I mean, for, I'm one of those fighters that when you, if I'm fighting a guy who's supposed to be at the top of his uh, game, then that's going to bring me to, to, to the top of my game. So it brings the best out of me. I mean, you know, if, uh, if, if Crawford's talking about Spence, maybe that fight happening and, and, and overlooking me, I think he is going to be having a big shock. So I hope he's going to be ready uh, in this fight. I mean, he's been hurt by, I mean, we've both been hurt in fights, but he's been hurt by guys like Gamboa. I mean, I'm a fully fledged, uh, well, I went by, I really hit hard. You know, he's the division, and I have got good knockout percentage. I'm an unbeaten one way fighter. It's the, it's the way where I feel comfortable at, and it's the way where, you know, I feel stronger as well, and I've got my speed, I've got my movement, and I've got the perfect fight. Whereas, the other way, it maybe might have been a little bit um, too much for me going up to when I fought against Canelo. That's maybe putting on too much. But even that fight, I mean, I really think I was in that fight. You know, when it comes to boxing skills and, and, and being smart and knowing that I couldn't make any mistake, but obviously I'm caught with a good shot, which probably would have knocked out any one away fighter, you know, uh, within, uh, within that fight. But this is where I want to maybe tell everybody that, look, I'm not just a number, but I'm just going to come into this fight and make, a, make numbers or make a night of boxing. I'm coming to win this fight. All right, thank you. Your next question is from Benjamin Black. Yeah, hi, Amir. Uh, just a question for you. You talked a little bit about um, fighting in New York and having been married here and having family here. How much of the venue at the Garden you know, uh, 
played into your decision to take this fight over Kell Brook and um, maybe just talk a little bit more about the home cooking of New York and maybe if any kind of yeah. advantage do you think that could give? New York is a very chill place. I mean, we might have a little bit of fear. And um, I love the place. I've been spending a lot of time there. Um, and also, the MSG is probably the mecca of boxing where you've got all the, you've had, you can, you've had all the biggest fights from the early uh, 80s and 90s have been there. You know? So I want to be amongst them. I want to be amongst them, those big fights that one day when I'm walking a kid, because I'll be spending a lot of time in. New York and I'll be walking past which I really like to take the kids there but your daddy fought there you know so um, I think this is it, it means a lot to me you know New York is something I'm never I'm always going to be attached to it so great that's the fight yeah. your next question is from Cameron Peter hey hey guys thanks for taking the time to talk to us all Amir, I appreciate it. I got a couple questions. Some of the guys answered my questions already. Um, speaking of Madison Square Garden, and maybe that's it, maybe that is, maybe it isn't. What is the most impressive venue you fought in? Um, so I, I fought in a few. I mean, looking back in my old career, I mean, I, I fought all over. Um, I'd say the the, the Madison Square Garden this will be one of the best ones I will ever fight because. Um, you know, it's, it's a micro boxing, it's a, they have some huge fights there. So I just would have to top all uh, the things of fighting. Uh, and also to get a win there would be even, even more amazing. Um, and if I were a title, it's uh, probably one of my biggest fights in my career. So I said this will always be number one. Uh, but then, you know, I fought the MFG, uh, not the MFG, sorry, uh, MFG, uh, MFG, uh, which is in Vegas, and also T-Mobile. So I've had the opportunity to fight in big, big arenas. I also like in New York when I fought uh, at Crystal Dewey at the uh, at stadium, the, uh, that's what it was, uh, what's the stadium called? The big uh, soccer, the big basketball thing mm -hmm. in, in New York, in Brooklyn. Oh, uh, uh, the Barclays. Yeah, yeah, Barclays. Yeah, Barclays. I fought the Barclays as well. So I've had the opportunity as a fighter to fight in all these different locations for MSG will be up there as one of the best, I have to say. Okay, uh, uh, I'm sure they'd like to they appreciate hearing that. Um, you you talked about kind of getting your mind set before the fight, kind of having your mind right. And how is it that you find the chill out before the big fight like this? Um, I've been in the game for quite a long time, like 14 years fighting um, and 10 years fighting at top level. So you just kind of learn as time goes on. I'm getting older, I'm 32 now. You know, I'm not no spring chicken where you know, I'm still young, I'm still learning. I've, I've, I've learned everything I'm used to. I've got the experience. I've done this numerous times. I know how to deal with everything now. I, uh, I know how to went to rest and when to talk and when to do things right. So, you know, it comes with age, it comes with experience. And I've, had that. I've been quite lucky to be in this position for uh, for, the, for the last uh, world top level for the last 10 years. Okay, I've got a couple more for you. Um, you mentioned about Crawford not over overlooking you as an opponent and not saying that you might be overlooking Crawford for your opponent, but we all have to look forward. Um, after, after beating Crawford on the 20th of April, would you see your fight yourself fighting Spence or would you be won another fight before you got to Spence? Honestly, I've never ever, um, never ever looked past my mom. I made that mistake when I was young and all the things that are going like, but to be honest with you, I'm just going to take every fight at that time. Um, there's a lot of big fights out there for me. There are Spencer, there are Cal Brook. There's big fights out there for me. Now, it just depends how long I want to be in the game for. You know, I've always said I want to retire really young and uh, I want to enjoy time with my family, so. Let's see. I mean, um, those fights can kind of happen. But like I said, um, I'm just going to, after the fight, hopefully the press conference, that's so we can talk about it. All right, we have to move on to the next question that we have to take. Your next question is from Tony Vin. Hi, Amir. Uh, Crawford uh, is a right-handed guy, but he's uh, 
become more comfortable fighting at the southpaw as he's gone on as the champion here. Uh, you have an extremely great record against southpaw fighters. Uh, I guess, first of all, how do you expect Crawford to approach your fight? And I guess, how do you uh, kind of counter what he's going to do, knowing that he, he prefers to fight southpaw now, even though he is a right-handed fighter? Um, we, we, uh, work, we work with different guys in sparring. But different guys who are coming at me, some are switching, switch some are guys who are southpaw, some are orthodox. So I'm, I'm not leaving anything behind. I'm working with both um, guys. If Crawford wants to fight me uh, southpaw, then so be it. If he wants to fight me orthodox, so be it. So we can be ready for whatever he brings to the table. I'm not leaving anything behind that. I don't want to go into the fight and think, wait a minute, I didn't expect this. You know? So I'm going to be make, I want to make sure that I've done everything right. And, uh, and I've learned every little bit from uh, from from my training partners. All right, next question. Your next question comes from Daniel Canobio. Yes, this question is for Mr. Aram. Uh, there's a lot of speculation on Twitter whether you write your own tweet. We saw yesterday you reached out and sent a tweet about uh, Crawford. And Spence, and you, you, you tweeted that out, Heyman, and a lot of people say, oh, Bob Aram doesn't, doesn't write his own tweets. It doesn't matter how to work Twitter. I just thought you would uh, set the record straight for us. Well, the people who think I don't work Twitter, uh, uh, we all work Twitter. Even the President of the United States uh, uh, uses Twitter. So, uh, yeah, I work Twitter. I, um, I think it's a great, great service. You can say a lot of things on Twitter and people, fans, uh, read them and respond. Sometimes they like them, sometimes they don't like them, and sometimes they say the most horrible things in response to them. But I think it's a lot of fun, and it is the modern way to educate fans and to reach fans. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm a big Twitter fan myself, and I use it uh, very often. And I like to do at least uh, uh, three or four tweets a week. So, uh, yeah, I plead guilty to writing my own tweets. So that's probably the only time you've ever agreed with the President of the United States. That Twitter is a great tool. Well, that's, that's really true, but I use it better than he does. <laughs> All right, thank you. Hey, and well, th thank you, everybody. Uh, after a brief hold, uh, Terrence Crawford will be joining us uh, on the line. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Amir, and we'll be seeing you soon. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. All the best. Yeah.